everybody. Ezra, I'm so happy to hear that I was good luck for you with your, um, with your paper your, or your chemistry exam. That's fantastic. Uh, kudos to your highest score ever. So thank you everybody for bearing with me for the past few days. I'm doing much better. I'm feeling much better. Uh, and just so you know, the watch along, the BTC Movie Club watch along for Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom has been moved to this Sunday. That's what we're going to do. We're going to um, watch it on this Sunday at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So uh, again, thank you for bearing with me. Uh, I'm glad you like my top, Rodolfo. This is for The Flash. The Flash trailer drops at uh, 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time in about an hour and a half, which is why we're having an early stream today. Uh, and so um, I wanted to make sure that I was available to react to that. And then, of course, break it down. I'm actually excited for that trailer. I'm actually excited, you know? Will they actually win us over to this movie? Uh, Dancing Dog 60, that was so generous of you to gift some memberships. And you know what that means? It's the beginning of another week. I'm going to gift some memberships as well. Oh, Ross, your first live stream. How fantastic. So these are given out randomly by YouTube. They select the people who are most active with the channel. Uh, and that's the way it's done for all gifted memberships. So I'm going to gift some too. You guys are so generous. Uh, I want to make sure that I do it as well. So I'm going to gift my, uh, I'm going to give five memberships because I'm doing it every week. So hold on, let me check out. All right, there we go. I'm buying them. Ah, oh, wait a minute. Ah, oh. hold on one second. I don't remember the security code for that card off the top of my head. <laughs> let me try this one. Oh, let's see if this works. Ah, one second. Oh, this is so embarrassing. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> Hold on. I got the card. I got the card right in front of me. All right. Is this the right one? Yeah. Okay. Huzzah! I did it. There we go. Five memberships every week. Thank you all for your generosity. It's so kind of you. I, I really, really appreciate it. And so I told you, you guys were doing so great every week. Ah, Jerome, once again, gifting a membership. Uh, and so, oh, and I also see that uh, Gizmo also gifted a membership. That's very kind. Don't feel that you have to gift a membership, but everyone who does, I appreciate it. And you guys have been gifting memberships for quite some time. And so I'm very glad that I'm able to do it as well. But yeah, I'll have to write it down somewhere at my desk so that that doesn't happen again. <laughs> uh, Jerome, that's, you're very generous. You're very generous. All right, so I gifted five memberships. Let's see who got them. Let's see who got them. All right, uh, Lee Tall got one. Uh, Matthew Simmons. Where'd the other ones go? I gave five. Oh, there we go. Seattle Law Nerd, Sarah Holfen, Holfener. That's one, two, three, four. Where's the fifth one? Ah, YouTube. Oh, look, you guys were very kind to gift memberships as well. Thank you so much. Thank you, Cool Guy 567 for gifting some memberships. And thank you, Justin, as well. All right. People who get the gifted memberships, I wish it would tell you for the person who gifted it so that, because you, you, I've seen a number of people come on later and say, oh, thank you, Dominic, and say, oh, that somebody gifted me a membership. It means so much to me. So that, that's very kind. All right, you guys, you're the best. All right, so we got a lot. We got a lot. Let me close that window. We got a lot to discuss today. We got a lot to discuss. All right. Josh, do not live tweet the current panel. Okay, 
Really, Josh, you got to stop doing stuff like that. I just put you in a timeout. Don't make me block you permanently. All right, yeah, it's booping time. It's booping time, everybody. Okay, so we're talking today about Sony's panel from last night. Let's get started. Hey, Andrew. Hey, Jack. Oh, Siri, you came over. It was my pleasure to gift you a membership. Oh, I'm so glad you got it live. That makes me so happy. All right, so story number one. Here we come. Here we come. I'm, I'm going to drag Aaron Taylor Johnson, Danny. I'm going to do it. Hey, big boss. Hey, Viren. All right, here we go. Boop, boopity boop, boop. So Sony kicked off CinemaCon last night. Now, for those of you who aren't familiar with CinemaCon, CinemaCon is like um, a velvet, velvet rope Comic-Con, okay? It's like it's an industry trade show, but it's becoming more and more press-centric. Uh, now you apply, I almost went this year because they're showing the flash. You have probably the most press you've ever had at the event this year because of that flash screening. Uh, I applied, uh, you know, I would have to cover my own expenses to go out to Las Vegas. It's for a whole week. Um, and you know, I've also, when I got the, I got approved, but then I found out I had to go to each studio and ask for their permission. Maybe I'll do it another year. But I just, you know, I don't know. It just didn't sit right with me. I was like, yeah, I don't really, you know, I don't really know if this is, this is for me. Uh, so anyway, uh, it's because, but it is a lot of press, a lot of press showing up. I think mostly to see The Flash, which Warner Brothers is hoping. Screens today. The trailer drops at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, but later today, a ton of people will be watching the actual film. Uh, they can, Warner Brothers says, please tweet about it right away. I saw a couple of tweets that it, the VFX aren't complete yet. And I don't know why, uh, they've been working on it for like four years. Uh, and that also the film is still not complete. Uh, I think that a number of things will leak from the, tra uh, from the film, uh, that I'm going to pretty much everything has leaked. Let's see, you know, if any screen grabs or, or stuff like that is a uh, leaks and, uh, like that, you know, but let's see. A lot of stuff's already leaked. I don't really think there's anything left to leak, but you know, now story points, I think. For sure, a full description of the movie will probably be up online, if not the next 24 hours, in like a week. Uh, it's just because of the kind of movie that it is. Just because of the kind of the kind of movie that it is. So yeah. So, but look for a lot of tweets. Uh, we'll see what the first initial reaction to the movie is. I suspect it'll be largely positive. But the question is, uh, you know, is the movie something people need to see in theaters? That's very different. You know, that's like I think. That's, I think, the question that a lot of people have. Because I got to tell you, and also let's just see, it's weird. Shazam 2, in my opinion, was a good movie. Uh, I thought it was well done, and it just got completely trashed. Uh, all right, so, they're, so that's what they're doing. Uh, big, big year. Warner Brothers is presenting right now, all right? Uh, but they release very few things to the public because, again, this is an industry trade show, and they just want people to talk about it. They just want people in the press to talk about it and say, oh, this footage looked good, and et cetera, et cetera. Uh, they showed a couple of teasers. Thank you, Sonny. They showed a couple of teasers. They have a little bit of video, but the only thing they released from the Sony presentation was the Equalizer trailer this morning. So the stuff doesn't go out. It very rarely goes out to the, to, to the public, and except for like the Flash trailer, which they're making a big deal about, and Transformers has a trailer on Thursday. So that's the stuff that's being released to the public. So I think that the biggest headline that came out of the Sony panel, we're going to touch on all the headlines that came out of the Sony CinemaCon panel, but the biggest by far was, uh, what happened here? Hold on. <laughs> Logan, I appreciate your guys' enthusiasm. Do not tweet about the Warner Brothers panel that's happening right now in this section, okay? Because it's distracting, it's annoying, don't do it. All right, so uh, the Craven uh, teaser was released uh, and they confirmed that the movie is going to be rated R, okay? They said the movie's gonna be rated R and I think that annoyed some people a little bit uh, because they wanted the Venom movies to be rated R. So I think that that's a little bit annoying to them uh, you know, the Craven is, the Craven is instead being rated R. Uh, yes, the Warner Brothers panel is happening right now. Uh, I'm not at CinemaCon. I'm here talking to you. So I cannot live comment on things that are happening right now that I have not seen. All right. So let's focus on the Sony stuff. All right. 
All right. Oh, so frustrating. Okay. Uh, thanks, Tom. Thanks for gifting a membership. All right. So uh, Craven will be rated R. Craven will be rated R. <clears throat> uh, but the Venom movies have not. Maybe, though, maybe Venom 3. Maybe they'll consider doing it for Venom 3. Let's see. Let's see if they decide to do that. Uh, Deadpool, of course, did extremely well. Uh, Logan and Joker made a billion dollars. So movies can do quite well if they're rated R. Uh, but, you know, I think that that's not been Sony's problem up until this point. In fact, the first Venom did incredibly well. It almost made about 800 million, you know, made, made around a little over, I think, $800 million worldwide. Uh, and it wasn't rated R. It was very, very successful. They said in the teaser trailer that Craven bit off somebody's nose and spit the blood at the camera. And I'm like, I don't know, man. I mean, some people, there will certainly be an audience that goes, whoa, hardcore, man, I'm there. Uh, but I think that to some degree, you know, that limits your audience. And I don't know how many people want to see a Craven, uh, you know, movie. If, I mean, I think that when you start stopping families from being able to go to a superhero movie, it better be really, really good and better focus on an iconic character. Uh, Deadpool, Logan, Joker, Craven doesn't fit in that group. So I'm a little bit surprised. Now, to me, the most funny thing, here it comes. Let's talk about Aaron Taylor Johnson. Uh, you can't see it here because of the shadowing, but his name, uh, let me see if I can bring it in as an image. <laughs> yeah. There it is. And it says, Aaron Taylor Johnson, <laughs> Craven. And you're like, who on earth? You know, they just did a poll, okay, about the top stars that bring actors, you know, the top actors that bring audiences into theaters. And they found out that nobody over, under 40 made the top, tw the top 10. And out of the top 20, Chris Hemsworth was, was the only one to place under 40, and he was number 20. So, uh, and also what I thought was interesting is that on this list, it came from Puck News, they did their own poll. It was, uh, you know, nobody there, everybody there had flops. Like, so it was like, oh, these are the actors that you want to go and see in theaters. But yet I just saw Tom Hanks completely flop at the box office with uh, a man called Otto. So what are you talking about? So that, that was just crazy. So it says, uh, Craven the, Aaron Taylor Johnson, Craven the Hunter. And I'm like, that's nuts, man. Russell Crowe is in this movie. You'd think they'd at least put both of them on top of that. I mean, this just seems like, it reminds me a lot of Jared Leto Morbius. And Jared Leto was a bigger star. Um, that is an A. It says A, hold on, you just can't see. There it is. Hey, we'll make it real big. There it is, see? Oh yeah, oh, why is it misspelled? Oh, that must, did somebody else put, that's weird. <laughs> All right, so I just think it seems absolutely crazy. Yeah, Rhino was teased. They apparently had Calypso in there. But these are characters that don't really mean anything to even, I think, a lot of comic book readers, much less casuals. Uh, also, whoever Aaron Taylor Johnson's agent is, they're doing an incredible job. Aaron Taylor Johnson is also uh, is apparently the frontrunner for James Bond. Uh, you know, Aaron Taylor Johnson has never worked out. It's just so crazy to me that suddenly he's getting another push. You know, this is a guy they've tried several times to make him work, and the audience just isn't there. So uh, the question is, are these brands big enough uh, to maybe, the, you know, to, to lift him up? I, I mean, another, and he's fine. He's a fine actor. I thought he was pretty good in uh, Tenet, uh, you know, Christopher Nolan's movie. Hey, Frosty Salt. You know, Tenet's recent movie, uh, you know, the, the movie that came out during the pandemic, uh, and he had a small role in the third act. He did a nice job. Uh, I think for a few minutes, everybody was like, is that Aaron Taylor Johnson? And we were like, oh, yeah, it is. But I, I can't imagine anybody going to see him. Uh, I don't even know. He might have just shown up as I didn't see any photos of him backstage, which I thought was surprising. Um, I wanted to use a photo from CinemaCon. That's a photo of them actually filming. So let's see how it turns out. Let's see how the trailer turns out, but I feel like this is not going to really work out. As for other things that were discussed uh, at the Sony presentation, they showed a Gran Turismo teaser, which means that's ready to go and hopefully will be shown soon. Hey, Luna in the Sky with Diamonds. Oh, thank you for the Weezy. Thank you for gifting some memberships. 
Uh, they had they showed about 15 minutes of Spider Verse, 15 minutes of Spider Verse into the Spider Verse. Bad Boys 4 had an introductory video. I thought it was pretty funny with Will Smith and um, Martin Lawrence saying they were. I thought it was funny. They apparently said, we're glad we're not at CinemaCon because we're on set and we're getting paid to be here. Uh, you know, it's, you know, I don't think they pay you to go to these events, but they cer certainly cover your travel if you're talent. Uh, and obviously top-notch travel. But you want your movie to do well, so of course you show up to advertise it. But I thought that was pretty clever. Uh, this is quite the redemption movie, Bad Boys 4. It not only has Will Smith in it, but the Batgirl directors, Adil al Arbi and Bilal Falah, uh, Fala, return uh, after the last bat. Oh, this is, what is this? Isn't this Bad Boys 5, actually? Yeah. Uh, oh, no. Yeah, no, Bad Boys 4. Yeah, I thought it was Bad Boys 4. So that's not, I mean, let's see. I mean, you got a lot of comeback here. You got a lot of comeback. But I really liked the last Bad Boys. I thought the last Bad Boys was excellent. Then they showed the opening scene for Dumb Money, which is their movie about the GameStop stock situation. Remember when people on Twitter decided to make stock go up? They also did it for AMC, which is a movie theater, and CinemaCon is a presentation for movie theaters. So I think it's funny that they're not focusing on what they did to the AMC stock. Yeah, stonks, that's right, Mika. So it's the stonks situation. It stars Seth Rogen, Paul Dano, Dano, and an entire amazing cast of people. So that sounds actually pretty interesting to me. And then uh, Anyone But You, uh, I think that's another movie they were showcasing. That's that romantic comedy with Glenn Powell and Sidney Sweeney, which seems to be most famous recently for Glenn Powell's girlfriend unfollowing Sidney Sweeney on social media because they seem too chummy on set. Uh, and I was like, that's craziness, man. What kind of a ridiculous situation is this? Uh, and then uh, Ghostbusters had a little bit of a, a, a video from set in New York City. They were like, it's confirmed that it's in New York City. And it's like, who didn't know it was in New York City? Uh, and then, to me, what was very interesting is that they showed footage of Napoleon. I would have released that publicly. They showed uh, a battle sequence from Napoleon, which is Ridley Scott's upcoming film uh, for later this year, uh, starring, who else? Joaquin Phoenix. Boy, he's getting a lot of work. He's actually, I think, pretty well cast as Napoleon. And you have to wonder if, no, nothing on Madame Web. Uh, and you have to wonder if uh, Napoleon could be maybe as good as Gladiator. And what was also interesting about this situation is that while Napoleon will get released in theaters for Thanksgiving, a very wide release, uh, Apple TV has partnered with Sony, uh, not only, I think, to you know, produce the film, but then after, a, they said, a robust stream, a, a robust theatrical release, Napoleon will go to Apple TV. That's where it will be, that's where it will stream. Uh, you know, that's, you know, Apple TV has a lot of good content, uh, but, you know, they don't seem to particularly do well as a streaming service. You know, let's see if Severance can, season two can maybe move the needle a little bit. But I don't know, I'm kind of interested in a Napoleon movie. I like history. I don't know that much about Napoleon. What I've heard, not positive. <laughs> so Vanessa Kirby's in the movie as well. It's Josephine, Josephine by the way. Uh, so let's see. Let's see what they, what they, uh, what they decide to do. Uh, but yeah. I think um, that's the Sony presentation. I think it was solid. I think the Sony presentation was solid, but I do not think, you know, there was no reason for that to, it seemed very much to me like an industry presentation. Uh, it did not seem at all to me like something for the general public. So that's why CinemaCon, I think, still exists in a weird space. Uh, let me get to some of your questions before we move on to the next story. If you want to ask me anything or say anything in particular about this story, we can talk about that right now. Uh, Dream says, do you think Aaron Taylor Johnson has broken a bigger market because he's mostly been showcased uh, in genre roles? You mean why he hasn't? I don't think, you know, sometimes an audience just doesn't like an actor. Even if they're extremely talented, sometimes they just don't click. And I'm sorry to say that I believe Aaron Taylor Johnson is one of those people. He's not even clicking at the level of Ryan Gosling, who also hasn't really clicked. Some actors can sell tickets, some can't. And uh, I just don't think Aaron Dale Taylor Johnson could sell tickets. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Sean Turner says, James Bond or Craven could make him a star. I really hope he doesn't get James Bond, Sean, so, so let's hope. And then Allison says, why don't you think Aaron Taylor Johnson is more popular? That's why. Uh, I just don't think that he, he has that ability. SMR Goose says, Ted Lasso carries Apple TV. Well, it doesn't air that often, and I, I don't think the current season is doing very well. Uh, let's see. Uh, Kay Walton says, Brian Tyree Henry outcharmed him in Bullet Train. Yeah, Brian Tyree Henry was great in Bullet Train. You know, Bullet Train is the movie that sold 
uh, Sony on Aaron Taylor Johnson. And I was like, okay, let's see this. And when I watched the movie, I was like, seems like the same old Aaron Taylor Johnson to me. Although Alex disagrees. Alex disagrees. Evan Moore says, any idea if these Spidey adjacent movies are leading anywhere like a team up or Sinister Six movie? I don't believe so. I don't think so because I don't think they're going to do Sinister Six outside of the MCU, quite frankly. Uh, I think that the MCU is going to want to do Sinister Six. They already kind of did in No Way Home in that main Spider-Man movie. I wish they would pick a Spider-Man since they have the Spider-Verse now and do it in live action. And I wish that they would have a some Spider-Man, maybe Andrew Garfield. I liked that rumor, you know, that Andrew Garfield would be the Spider-Man in these movies that Tom Holland obviously doesn't want to be in. And I think that would have been a good way to handle it. I think, I think having Spider-Man movie villains uh, without their hero they're supposed to be fighting is ridiculous. And you end up turning all these characters into anti-heroes. They, and during the presentation for Craven, they were like, oh, we might be biting off people's noses, but they were bad guys. And he's actually fighting for you. And you're like, what? Craven's a villain. He's actually one of the worst and most egregious villains because he's so dangerous and so effective that Spider-Man has. And now he's nice? You know, like we don't, when Spider-Man is eventually maybe someday fighting these people, we don't want to be like, oh, but that guy's actually okay. Don't bother him. Uh, Trey says, two double dips into Marvel here seems like unnecessary casting. Alan Taylor Johnson's Quicksilver and Russell Crowe's Zeus. Well, there's so many comic book movies these days, they're running out of actors. And, you know, I guess, God forbid, they, they discover some new talent. Yeah, I'd rather go with somebody new, quite frankly, than Aaron Taylor Johnson. But here we are. The head of Sony really liked Bullet Train. You know, to only to have been at that screening where he watched Bullet Train and fell in love with Aaron Taylor Johnson. And all of his, all of his uh, lieutenants in the room were like, that guy, really? And they didn't dare tell him that that man already had multiple times to try and make it in Hollywood, and it hadn't worked. They weren't like, we've already tried several times. So let's see. We see says, isn't Craven a big game hunter type? Yes, that's exactly it. And that's why he decides to hunt superheroes. He feels they're a challenge. Um, and you know, I just think it doesn't work. Hey, Robo Coasty, that's a great name. All right, so let's move on to the, to the next story of the day. All right, hold on, here we go. Next story of the day. All right, so. Boop! Oh man, Hollywood is in some turmoil right now. It's very tumultuous over there. They've discovered that there's no money in streaming, <clears throat> especially because streaming is so expensive. Uh, so it's extremely expensive to produce content for streaming, and yet it turns out having people pay one low fee a month does not generate the type of revenue that Hollywood wanted to. Hollywood was built on an a la carte menu. They've actually sold one product to you multiple times. You bought a ticket to see it in theaters. Then you paid to uh, buy it on DVD or Blu-ray. Then they sold it to a network to air on television and on cable. So they were like, we could sell this multiple times. And now suddenly you just want to wait to watch it for the low, low encompassing cost of like what? Well, now it's getting up there. So six to 15 to $20 a month. So uh, Disney's also to cut expenses as we speak, having a bloodbath, uh, you know, Disney's firing a ton of people. This is the worst week they're going to have. Uh, they're firing about... Uh, I'm going to bring up Charlotte Kirk, Mika. Uh, they, you know, they've, uh, fi they're firing about uh, 7,000 in total, but the bulk of them are going to be this week. Uh, yesterday was like Hulu and stuff like that, uh, and ABC television. And then today they're going through ABC, uh, ABC News. And I also hear there are going to be a lot of firings in other divisions like animation later this week. Uh, so everybody's getting called in. They're having huge firings at Disney. And I think one of the most interesting so far was they had purchased, they had purchased, you know, what it was like, 538 or something, some kind of, um, you know, service that was able to predict, you know, you know, the way, you know, it was like, you know, John King on CNN has the magic wall. Well, there was some site that they purchased over there uh, that, you know, had done, you know, they, they purchased it and they brought over, the, yeah, it was a stats website, Wade. It was, the guy's name is Nate Silver. Uh, yeah, 538. Thank you, Rudy. It's a polling site, 538. They purchased it, I'm sure, for a lot of money, and Nate Silver was brought over to work at Disney. Uh, and they eventually folded it into ABC News. Well, he was fired today, Nate Silver. He was fired, but they kept 538 as a Disney brand. So I hope he was paid a lot, and I hope he held on to that. Uh, and, you know, that's... That's surprising that the person who started the brand and, uh, you know, was the one who ran it 
Uh, you know, it is interesting that Disney got to a point where they felt we're fine doing this ourselves. Uh, so, wow, yeah, they fired Nate Silver. They fired him today. Well, they didn't, he doesn't have to leave the building immediately, but his contract is not getting renewed. So, whoo, it's rough out there. It's rough out there. The whole entertainment industry is having a very difficult time right now because streaming was not the cash cow that they had envisioned. But then the biggest news, though, was that on Sunday evening, Jeff Schell, that's the individual there on top, he is uh, an industry staple. He's an industry staple, this guy. He has been a major player at uh, NBC Universal for decades, but only recently became the CEO of the company. And on Sunday night, he resigned. He resigned. Uh, now, he is not the CEO of all of Comcast. That's Brian Roberts. Uh, but this is a pretty big deal. So Jeff Shell, if you haven't seen the headlines, Jeff Shell resigned because there was an inv investigation after there was a complaint of sexual harassment and discrimination filed against him from the woman he was having an affair with. So there's probably a very, very juicy, crazy story there. Uh, apparently, Jeff Shell had been having an affair with that reporter based in Abu Dhabi for 11 years off and on and managed to keep it a complete secret, potentially, I guess, because she was based in Abu Dhabi. But this is very reminiscent of the Kevin Sujihara situation, which some of you have been bringing up, where Kevin Sujihara had to decide who would be the company to give the financing for Warner Brothers' slate of pictures. And Brett Ratner said, you know how I bet we can seal this deal? Offering up someone for him to sleep with, which was actress Charlotte Kirk. And Charlotte Kirk apparently did it for a role in a Warner Brothers movie. And for some reason, Kevin Sujihara didn't realize that this was going to blow up in his face. And he kept trying to say he would maybe give her a, a role or give her an audition. Uh, and she, you know, a horrible actress, totally unprofessional. It was just, a, it was a laughable scenario from day one. Uh, but nobody's laughing with the fact that that actually worked and got, you know, Brett Ratner's company, uh, Rat Pack, the very lucrative uh, funding deal for Warner Brothers. And that's how Kevin Sujihara get fu got fired. So it's really crazy that Jeff Shell did the exact same thing over at another studio. Like, my God, man, my God, where's human resources? Where's human resources? Oh, yeah, the Charlotte Kirk situation, as you might recall, was also crazy. Because what was that director's name? It was Neil something. He did the, uh, those women who were like, um, he, he had, was supposed to direct Hellboy. He fell in love with Charlotte Kirk. Uh, this other director and like totally ruined his career because he decided he was going to make movies for her to star in. It was a very weird situation. And we thought that wouldn't ever happen again. But here we are. Here we are with Jeff Shell. Uh, so Jeff Shell ha had been having an on and off relationship with this woman for 11 years. 11 years. Nobody knew. And one has to wonder what happened after 11 years that this reporter, Hadley Gamble, decided now it was time to file a... Um, file a complaint. So something must have happened behind the scenes. So it's pretty bad. Uh, Hadley Gamble, uh, she's not only based out of Abu, uh, uh, um, Abu Dhabi, uh, but she also uh, apparently had a very infamous interview with, uh, with Putin, Vladimir Putin. And I saw, I was looking into it a little bit, and apparently she was uh, accused of, oh, that's right, Warlocks, Neil Marshall. But Hadley Gamble was being accused by, I think, maybe some Russian state media of being a honey trap for Vladimir Putin to get him to let down his guard during the interview, and you're like, what's happening? So that's, this, that's who this woman is. Nobody ever heard of her until this happened, although she didn't want her name to come out. Her lawyer uh, released a statement saying that she was upset that her, her privacy had been violated, and that's true. You know, you want to feel that you are safe enough to be able to make these kinds of, uh, file these kinds of reports, but I think that the hard truth is, is that it's not going to stay secret. It's just too big of a story. Uh, it's just too juicy. So th the name's going to leak. Uh, there's just nothing that can be done about that. Uh, so there was no word about a settlement. This apparently happened a month ago that she filed this complaint. And they took a month to investigate it. And the result was that they told Jeff Shell, you have to resign. Uh, there's been a little bit of some confusion. Sometimes you guys have wondered, hey, if the person was said they resigned or they parted ways, does that mean the person didn't quit? No, the person was, I mean, or the person quit. No, the person was fired. The person definitely was fired. Uh, parted ways, creative differences, these are always, you know, ways for the person to save face who is being let go. Uh, when they say the person was fired, that means they hate them, they're burning a bridge, they have no, they think they're never going to run into them in Hollywood again. 
So they're just, you know, that's what it happens. And here they allowed Jeff Shell to resign instead of being fired. And, you know, he said he apologized to his NBC Universal family and they deserve better. And some people, I think, rightly said, how about apologizing to your family? And, uh, but I guess that's personal. But, you know, Jeff Shell, I think, created a personal situation by having a personal relationship, you know, affect not only his own career, but the company. So what's going to happen? I don't think this is, well, you never know. Because so right now, Comcast president Mike Kavanaugh is taking over. Um, by the way, I wanted to say thank you, Joey. Thank you for the well wishes. So a president, Comcast president, who's a, that means Comcast is above NBC Universal. Comcast president, not CEO, but president Mike Kavanaugh is going to take over for now. And they're not even looking for a successor. So it sounds to me like they're like, let's just not have one. Let's save the money, report to Mike, or maybe Mike will leave Comcast and become the president, I mean, the CEO of NBC Universal. So maybe it's Mike Kavanaugh's job to see if he wants, because they're not even looking for a successor. And they said that Mike Kavanaugh knows NBC Universal quite well uh, and is a good person to, you know, has been involved in the past. So he's a good person to make sure there are no hiccups. I think that's the only real concern. Could they potentially hire an idiot, right? I mean, every time you replace somebody, particularly so high up, you worry that they could maybe have bad ideas. Uh, Jeff Shell, apparently, outside of his own personal life, knew how to drive, so to speak. So you had someone who was pretty consistent and solid in the driver's seat and was doing a good job. You know, that's good. That's right, Mika. Chapik, uh, he did a horrible job. He drove Disney off a cliff. Uh, Zaslov, you know, doing tremendous damage to the Warner Brothers brand. And so I think that, you know... NBC Universal actually is on a roll. They just released Nintendo. I mean, they just started a beautiful friendship with Nintendo. They've been doing incredibly well. Uh, they're ha you know, they've had uh, a lot of these great movies going, you know, the, the B-movie parade that we've been enjoying. So they're actually doing very well as a, as a, as a company. So I certainly don't think they want to run into any problems. Uh, well, Mika Peacock, I think Peacock is, you know, it's, I think it's doing okay. It's able to play some shows in the top 10 on Nielsen. So... Uh, it's doing okay. But I do think it's interesting that Nope went from Peacock to Prime Video, as we discussed on Movie Math on Sunday, in an effort to create windows and streaming. You know, it used to be just a few months ago that every studio wanted their movie only on their streaming service. That was a selling point. But now, as they see people churn or just simply refuse to go over to some streaming services, Universal says, well, why shouldn't we allow, why are we going to let this keep us from making money um, off of, uh, off of Nope. Again, they're, they're starting to sell. They're starting to, to sell things multiple times, which is the name of the game. So let's see what happens. Nobody wants Hulu, uh, 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 Rabbi. Uh, nobody wants Hulu. Disney's like, maybe we'll sell it to Universal. Universal's like, maybe we'll sell it to Disney. Uh, I still would like to see uh, Zaz Zaslav will not get fired, Max, particularly because I think, again, he's repackaging Warner Brothers to sell yet again and make a ton of money for himself and AT&T, who is still a major stockholder. So I believe that's what's going to happen still. I still believe that's going to happen with Warner Brothers Discovery. Uh, all right, so it is very succession-y, talking about a chop shop, uh, Waystar, uh, you know, Waystar, uh, the company from Succession does make you think about, you know, they're, they're having conversations about, you know, retaining the legacy. And if you chop it up and break it up into a lot of assets to sell off, what, what does the Roy name mean after that? Although succession is interesting because that's a family running a company. And now you don't have any families running companies anymore. Uh, you know, it's all these people who come in and, and they don't have any skin in the game. They're just there to make as much money as they can. You know, like the, in the succession, you know, the other the team, the team that's worried about their golden parachute, they just want a high payout for their stock options. Uh, and so you certainly have some companies who operate that way. Netflix, for instance, for a while was paying people with stock, which is why when Netflix had a stock fluctuation, you know, they had a little, a little wiggle. Uh, remember that everyone freaked out because a lot of their salary was in stock. So when the stock started to go down, they were like, holy crap. Oh, that's right, all in the game. The Redstone still runs Viacom. That's excellent, all in the game. Thank you for reminding that. And the, oh, and the Roberts family for uh, Comcast? That's, uh, so that's good, but not the lower parts. Uh, that's interesting about Roberts. Uh, I didn't know that was a big family. Uh, but yeah, the Redstones are really basically down to Sherry, and she's trying to sell too, by the way. Sherry wants a huge payout. Uh, that's why they, everything's called Paramount now, because they feel that's an easier thing to sell than Viacom. But very interesting, very, very interesting. So yeah, that, that, I think it was a little bit of a ding for NBC Universal, which has been pretty dingless. I think that's one of the other things that was so surprising. You were like, 
oh, wow, you know, like NBC Universal seems to stay away from the drama. And then they were like, oh, my God, drama, drama. All right, so that's the second story of the day. The third story of the day, here we go. Boom, baby. Uh, the Writers Guild strike. The Writers Guild strike. We probably might be talking about this in a stream later this week when it actually happens. I've, I know some people in the Writers Guild. They feel it's going to happen. Uh, this will either happen late this week or early next week. The deadline to decide is May 1st, which is Monday. So they might decide on Friday and be like, oh, strike city. Or they might wait till Monday to kick off the week and be like, oh, yeah, strike, strike, strike. So uh, the union leadership has already held a vote with the union members as to whether or not they have the ability to have a strike. And the union members voted yes. Uh, so that means what the reason that you do that is that in negotiating in negotiations, the leaders of the Writers Guild who are handling the negotiations with the different studios and stuff can say, we are authorized to strike. So you don't have to wait for us to check with our constituents. We're just going to strike right now. So they can strike whenever, and whenever they want to. And it is, again, expected to happen in the next couple of days. Uh, now, the issue, what they're striking over yet again, is the streaming situation. And that data is hidden, and there's a loss, a significant loss of residuals. Everybody gets paid up front uh, and instead of getting paid for the rest of their life with checks. It's very important. It's something that, because, you know, nobody, almost nobody works consistently in the industry. Uh, and remember, with these guilds, like only about 10%, and that's generous. Sometimes it's less than 5% are able to learn, earn a, 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 a very successful living at this business. A lot of these people are living paycheck to paycheck or living off of residuals, or at least they used to. Uh, and also, streaming has diluted the size of audiences. It used to be, if you got a big sitcom back in the day, millions of people watched it whenever it aired weekly, and then you would get residuals uh, for the rest of your life that would still be paying huge dividends. You're not even seeing residuals for stuff like Friends anymore, because somebody buys the rights up front, and then you do get a big check. You get a big check. Uh, you know, uh, at that time, but I think, you know, the trickle, the monthly or weekly check was really good because you didn't have to worry about spending it and you knew that you could rely on it arriving. So residuals are extremely important for this business and they're going away. Uh, so that's really, really problematic. And also somebody mentioned that, uh, Wiki Nomad DJ, uh, said also chat GPT, uh, all the artificial intelligence situation. Uh, that's right, Mika. Seinfeld, huge, you know, not only did it make Jerry Seinfeld very rich, but Larry David as well. Uh, so, Danny, almost everybody on a show gets residuals. The, the actors, the, the, uh, the writers, because there's a writer's room, the producers. That's why, I've mentioned this before, back in the day, whenever you hit five seasons, because that's how much you needed to syndicate, uh, they would throw a party on the set of that show, because they were like, we qualify for syndication, which means that this show is going to air forever and we will get checks forever. Uh, Jason says, I've been uh, living on residuals a lot during lockdown and after this business. Oh, that's great. I'm glad to hear that, Jason. And also, I got to tell you, I had just a few lines in Zombieland. I got paid pretty good off of that just because SAG said I had to get paid uh, because I had lines, because I had a line. And so when I saw those checks come in from SAG, I was like, wow, I wonder what everybody else is getting because I only had like two lines. You know, I shot more than that. Uh, that scene was going to be uh, longer, but they decided to make it an end credit sequence instead. Bill Murray had some real gems that didn't make it. Um, very funny. Uh, but, uh, you know, again, I just had a couple of lines. And so, no, it's not for the, no, Mika, it's, it's, it's still not going because it whittles down and it's a movie. So it's not the same situation. Uh, but, you know, it started out pretty good. You know, it was definitely... I would say I definitely made how many, I'm trying to figure out how many figures. I don't know if it was like, I don't know if it was five figures, but it was definitely four figures, you know? And so I was really surprised. I was like, wow. And I got those checks for like a little over a year. Um, not, it was not four figures every time, but you know, it was, I was surprised. I was like, wow, no wonder everybody loves residuals. Uh, so yeah. No, not tens of thousands of dollars. <laughs> that would be big. But, you know, I think the first check was for, like, like definitely, like, over a thousand. I don't remember, but definitely over a thousand. Then there were a couple hundred checks in the hundreds. 
Uh, it was, you know, I was surprised. Um, and again, somebody else, imagine if someone who had a ton of lines or even just a scene. Uh, and imagine if you're a working actor who's in a number of things or, you know, you start to get multiple residuals. It's very important. And they're going away because everything's done up front, a la carte. But they're not paying below the line talent up front. Those people are just getting nothing. And that's the majority of people who are in guilds. So that's why you're seeing strikes. The Directors Guild wants to strike. The Writers Guild is going to strike. The Actors Guild is thinking of striking. Everybody wants to strike because they all want their money. That's right, Mika, Alan Alda, MASH, tons of money, tons of money. Uh, of course, part of that goes to agent, manager. These people have a lot of expenses for all the people that they hire to run their team. But still, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's, you know, it's quite the business. But, you know, I think sometimes people look at Hollywood and they just see these big paychecks, but they don't think about the fact they're not consistent. And that's another reason I think people argue for the big paychecks, uh, especially actors, because they're like, not only do I have a lot of expenses, uh, but I don't know what I'm getting. My like I told you, Chris Pine, I don't think anyone's ever going to pay him $12 million again after the way Dungeons and Dragons performed. So he's like, all right. Uh, Jason says, every group needs to strike and sort out the pay power structure to make everyone whole again. The government isn't in a hurry to update the copyright lies, laws and all of that because Disney and the like are keeping them out with their money. Yeah, lobbying is serious. Lobbying is very, very serious. So let me tell you a few other things and then I'll, you guys can ask me questions about this uh, story. I'm glad you're so interested in this story. This is great because, you know, you're learning a lot about how the business works. So uh, worst case, the trades are saying, is if it lasts more than four months. Although the last writer's strike, you know, uh, you know about 10 years, uh, not 10 years, but, but, you know, 2008 around there, uh, it only lasted 100 days, a little over three months, and that did tremendous damage, as you might recall. Some of you were talking about Daniel Craig, who had to rewrite Quantum of Solace on set himself because they, a writer wouldn't cross the picket line. Good for them. And, you know, obviously Daniel Craig has not only no writing ability, but he's actually destructive. <laughs> that movie was so horrible. All right, so anyway, they're very worried uh, about the writer's strike. You know, how long will it last? Uh, and again, it's probably going to last for a while because all these people are fighting for their lives. They're fighting for the future of the industry. Oh, yeah, and not only are they worried about getting replaced or losing some paychecks. You know, when you are a writer, for instance, you get paid to write an outline. Then you get paid to write a first draft. And then sometimes you'll get paid for the additional drafts where it's built into the first contract. But the outline is a separate paycheck. Uh, if ChatGPT exists, they don't need to pay you anymore. They'll say, we generated an outline for this movie already thanks to this ChatGPT. We just need you to finesse it. And since you're not even writing a full screenplay, well, you're not going to pay you as much. So that's very concerning. What will the role of a live person be whittled down to? And the smaller that role is, the less money the studio might feel they have to pay for it. So this, and also, ChatGPT, I was talking to somebody else I know in the industry about this, and they said because ChatGPT is being taught how to come up with shot lists, which I think is horrible. The whole point of art is that it comes from someone's imagination and mind uh, and their soul. And you know, if this is all just being churned out by a computer, I think that's pretty disgusting. And I think we'll probably be having this discussion in the next year or so. Um, so anyway, that's gonna get rid of a lot of entry-level positions. You know, assistants, people who come in, that's how you get a leg up in the industry. You come in here and you do the grunt work. But if a computer does the grunt work, how are you gonna get an inroad? How are you going to get into the door? I mean, they've already abused interns. What are they going to do with artificial intelligence? And, an art, you know, intern is supposed to work for free. In fact, an intern usually has to pay to work because you have to pay for the credits at the college, uh, which I always thought was ridiculous. But anyway, so what's going to happen with the delay? Marvel is like, woohoo, we're so backed up on projects, no worries. But this could affect their rewrites. They're rewriting like crazy right now because they aren't happy with their scripts. And they're like, oh my goodness, people actually care about the quality of the writing. We better get back on this. Uh, streamers also have a backlog. So some people are worried that they're going to be a real holdout in the talks because they have such a backlog of content, they can maybe wait out the Writers Guild. Who can wait the longest? Can the writers wait longer to get paid? Or will it be the, you know, the, the distributors, you know, the studios and the streaming services, can they, how long do they, until they desperately need new content? And not just to release, but to start getting it worked on. Writers are the first line. Uh, so if this stuff can't even be written, you know, you're going to start to have a situation where you have a gap coming up. Uh, like the pandemic created. And that's also been part of the conversation. Like, how many times is Hollywood going to get hit? They got hit with the first writer's strike, then the pandemic, now a new writer's strike. Uh, uh, DC, for instance, this could be very effective, uh, a problem for DC. 
Uh, I did see some talk in the trades about how James Gunn is like right out in front of this because, you know, at least they can work on the Superman movie. And I would call Matt Reeves up and I'd say, you got to lock down the Batman 2 script because you guys got to move ahead. So DC, though, they have a ton of projects that were announced and all of those would have to be stopped being worked on from a screenplay, screenwriting perspective. So that would be very bad. And then also, though, there is, a, I think summer's a little too crowded. We saw the way March went down. March was rough. No movie was number one for more than one weekend because it was back to back to back. And I think that that hurt a lot of the movies. Super Mario is doing great because it has, not only was it a huge behemoth just right out of the gate, but no one's challenged it for the entire month of April. Some of you asked that maybe that was because people knew it would be big. April's actually not a big movie going month. March is very big because it's spring break, it's stuff like that. Then uh, usually April is a little slow and then things pick up again for summer. Sometimes you'll see a movie come out at the end of April, like right before to get a little bit of a jump on the first weekend of May. But you know, usually that's the way it goes. So, uh, but ever, I think John Wick got hurt. I think Dungeons and Dragons got hurt. I think it was not great. I think it was not a great situation. So I'm very worried about June. I think June is nuts. June goes into the Spider-Verse. Uh, it's got uh, also uh, The Flash. It's got Transformers. It's got Indiana Jones. It's too much. Uh, and you know, it makes me wonder if they go on strike, maybe they'll move some of those movies. They've all been advertised so heavily though, but maybe they should shift everything. You know, Shift it from some movies from summer to winter. Like why is uh, Haunted Mansion coming out in July? Stick that in September, you know, like just smooth, let's move things out just a little bit is maybe what they'll do. I would actually think that would be a good idea. Uh, and then uh, we'll see, so we'll see what happens. TV, I think, is the worst situation, network television, because they have writer's rooms that, you know, for instance, late night shows, their writer's rooms couldn't work. And they have, you know, they're, you know, Saturday Night Live couldn't work. Uh, and so that's why you saw at the last writer's strike such a huge rise of reality television because those were the only deals that could be made during the strike. So, I mean, I'm not quite sure how that is possible because they have writers for reality TV, but that's what happened. All right, let me get some of your questions on this and then we'll, you can ask me anything. Um, Bryce says, any input on voice actors in a possible strike? I think they're part of SAG. Um, let's see if they are able to strike. Uh, let's see here. Jen says, agree. I agree. I think September is an underrated movie month. Yeah, you know, Sean Chi did really well for Labor Day weekend, although I think that's when the Equalizer 3 comes out. Let's see here. Da, 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 da. Ariel Knight, welcome. Uh, Tina, of, uh, Tina of Deo says, agree. Chat GPT should only increase the quality. I think it was bad. You think chat, but you liked, so you disagree with me. I have major problems with artificial intelligence. Oh, you agree that it should only increase the quality, not generate the art. I see what you're saying, Tina. Uh, I even have some issues with that. I don't really like this being used in this regard. You know, I think it's really bad for society, but uh, I seem to be in the minority on that one. <laughs> I think it's such a bad idea. Uh, I think it's really bad. Uh, let's see here. Uh, John Camara says, how will a Warner Writers Guild strike shake up the theatrical release schedule? Uh, as I just said, maybe it'll delay some of the movies. I hope so. I think it's, they're packed too tightly. Uh, that's right, Viren. The strike was in the early 2000s, but new deals are coming up. Every once in a while, they have to renegotiate the deal that the Guild has with the, these companies. And so, so it's up for renegotiation. And they want to see the residual situation fixed. And But yet... They don't want, you know, the studios and the streamers want to keep all the money. They don't want to pay residuals out. So uh, that's why all the data is secret. Welm says, why don't actors specifically live below their means so they don't overspend, I guess? Well, Welm, you're talking about millionaires. I'm talking about the actor who is a background actor or an actor who just gets a couple of supporting roles. Those people do not get paid a lot of money. And that's the majority of who an actor is. I wish they would make this more clear when people are considering going into acting. I think that they always just highlight the best case scenario when, again, I think particularly for SAG, I think 1%, I think I heard that uh, number, 1% of SAG members earn enough money as an actor that they don't need a second job. That's very low. Obviously. So that's 99% can't support themselves as an actor. And they qualify to be SAG. You're not even talking about all the actors who don't. 
Bear Lake Fire says, used to work at a temp agency with a young woman who got cast in a Hollywood movie in Chicago. She made enough working for a week to quit temping. Yeah, it can be good, but you know, when is she gonna work again? SMR Goose says, so what's the fix? How would everyone get residuals? Well, they have to work out something new. They'd have to maybe, um, and the problem is, is that people aren't paying a la carte. So a residual of what? How much, it's like Mickey Mouse. Remember Mickey and the Beanstalk and Mickey's cutting the bean? You know, they have like no food and he's cutting a bean into slices. Uh, like how are you going to cut up the weekly, I mean the monthly, uh, what, 15 bucks you pay for Netflix or HBO Max amongst everybody who has something on the service? It's impossible. You know, it used to be that you would get a cut of what somebody paid to watch the content that you worked on. But now how is that going to be figured out? I think that's why streaming is not working out. Like if it's not working out now, imagine what happens after this gets settled. Jason says they have a huge staff of writers doing an entire film or series and the names get most of the cash. Um, I think writers get paid a little bit better, but yeah, it's still, it's a, it's a tough, it's, it's a difficult, you know, Hollywood is, is a difficult place. You know, that's why you have an agent. Oh, it's 2%. Okay. My apologies. Thank you, Jerome. 2% of act of SAG, uh, can support themselves. So 98% can't make a living as an actor. That's right. Mika Barry really shows that. Nikki says, how do you qualify for SAG? You have to have, uh, I think, a certain amount of on-screen airtime. Uh, if it's big enough in a single movie, you get right in, but sometimes you can cobble together a couple of appearances. Uh, let's see here. Mish says, do post-production companies strike together? You know, Mish, that's interesting. Uh, I think that editors are part of a union, but for instance, we've talked about how the fact that VFX uh, workers are not unionized, and I think are really suffering because of that. Uh, I don't know why they haven't unionized. Uh, I think it's crazy. I don't know what's taking so long. You think they would get on that, uh, especially because now basically a lot of blockbusters are animated movies. But they're still not. They're still not unionized. Alicia says, "Can they hire new writers uh, who aren't part of the guild?" Well, those people would cross the picket line. Uh, any strike, you cross the picket line, your name becomes mud with anybody who's striking. So technically, someone could, someone could go cross the line or work under the table, but if anyone ever were to find out about it, the strike will eventually end, and that person would never work again. That's right, Jen, scabs. Don't be a scab. It's a really horrible thing to do. Uh, I know sometimes people are in a desperate situation, but you should never do it. It's not going to work out for you. Ivan says, how do you become a member of the Writers Guild? I tried to research it, but I'm not as familiar with the terminology like units. Well, Ivan, I believe something that you write has to get picked up and produced. I don't know if it actually has to get produced. I don't know if a deal is enough, uh, but that's usually how you get in. Uh, Jason says, you missed the first of my comments. <clears throat> I was talking about composers in Hollywood. That's what all of this was about, to be clear. Um, I'm, I, I'm not quite sure what you're talking about, Jason, but I appreciate the input, especially because you know, you're someone who's in the industry dealing with this front hand. Ah, thanks, Elise. That's very nice of you. Oh, Danielle says, it goes by credits to become a member. I checked for a Writers Guild before. Oh, that's great, Danielle. Danielle, are you interested in being a writer? You're so great and positive. I hope you pursue that dream if you're still interested in it. Uh, so yeah, you know, uh, what kind of credits, what gets, uh, I guess as Sock says, the, Sock Lee says the deal. Uh, let's see here. And Danielle says the project does need to be, well, so, well but Sockley saying it's just a deal. That's interesting. T uh, Tina says, could residuals go away since the revenue is streaming, it's not the same. Well, if a show stops airing and doesn't get a lot of syndication deals, then residuals would dry up. Uh, so I think streaming has hurt that as well. Why did HBO Max, why did Warner Brothers Discovery take off so many shows from HBO Max? Because they didn't want to pay the few residuals that they had to in that agreement. Uh, and so that's why they, they moved, they, they removed it to, to, to take down their expenses, which is really horrific. Juan Carlos says in Mexico, you can't have someone else do the job of a union member that would be considered job usurping and it's a crime. Wow. That's interesting. It's not a crime here, but you know, you'll be shunned for the rest of your life. Uh, Interstellar Greenbean. That's a great name. That's right, Danny. We're talking about a lot of business today. Dancing Dog 60 says, Grace, in the 80s, there was an NFL player strike and some players who crossed the line were forgiven. Oh, were never forgiven. Yeah, I was like, what? Why would they do that? Yeah, never cross the picket line. Never cross the picket line. You should embroider that on a pillow. Don't do it. Jason says, oh, no worries. Ah, thanks, Jason. 
Talia says, what do you feel a VFX strike would do to the industry? A heck of a lot, Talia. Sorry, Talia. Uh, I don't know why I said Talia. A heck of a lot, Talia. And that's why they would be so powerful as a union. So I don't understand why they don't unionize. Although, could they be a global union? Would therefore maybe, you know, because maybe that's the problem. Maybe there are so many VFX houses outside of the United States that they would be able to just go there and be like, to Canada, to Canada. Yeah, Jennifer, never cross. Unions are important. Unions, of course, became very corrupt for a while, and then uh, they fell out of fashion. But uh, when unions work correctly, they are vital to the success of the worker. Uh, that's why I think it's important that things like Amazon really should have unions. But they, they've been able to successfully, for the most part, break the union votes, which is surprising and unfortunate. That's because a lot of people don't know history. Uh, you know what they say, if you don't know your history, you're doomed to repeat it. And unfortunately, because education in this country is so poor, how did this turn into a unicorn? Okay, because education is so poor, people don't know the history of unions. Uh, and they don't know the importance of unions, and then Amazon's able to come in and tell them a bunch of crap, and they vote against, I can't believe they vote against the union. That's incredible to me, that they have voted against the union. All right, so that's, uh, let's go on to the Q&A. Let's go on to the Q&A. All right, hold on. Where'd it go? There it is. All right, Q&A time. Thanks, Aaliyah. Uh, Kayla says, what are your thoughts on Alec Baldwin's charges being dropped? I thought it was really disappointing um, he killed somebody. Uh, I was even more disappointed that the armorer's charges were dropped because she definitely killed somebody through negligence. Uh, and I just was upset. You know, a lot of times people feel that there's two different sets of laws in this country. Uh, not only did it used to be done in terms of ethnicity, right? But now also, um, in terms of, uh, class and the fact that they don't want to, you know, it, it, I thought, you know, you would, it's like a little bit like when you talk about shootings and like what, once Sandy Hook was excused, you know, could anything ever be that egregious after, you know, more egregious? So like, I think you hit like a low point. And, you know, if somebody used to say to you, well, if a big celebrity killed somebody, do you think they'd go to jail? And I think you'd be like, oh, of course they would. Of course they would. But then you're like, oh, I guess not. So I think it's pretty, um, I, I mean, apparently everyone's going to still do a civil lawsuit against Alec Baldwin. So I think that's encouraging. And uh, I think he'll probably certainly feel it in the court of public opinion. I would be surprised if Alec Baldwin was able to, to work again. I mean, he will work again, but I, I don't think anybody will watch it. I would have a problem with it. Happy Tuesday to you too, Carter. I did see the dragon at Disneyland catch fire. I'm also glad nobody was hurt. But I was like, what a time for that to happen. You know, everybody's like, Ron DeSantis, you leave Disney alone. And of course, in many ways, we want him to. But one of the things he suggested was, uh, you know, ride inspections. <laughs> and we were like, oh, yeah, you're being a bully. And then Disney's like, oh, look, the monorail got stuck for an hour and we couldn't get anybody off in the Florida heat. Oh, look, our, this was in California, but one of our things caught on fire and burned to the ground. And you're like, maybe you do need some, uh, you know, uh, state oversight in that regard. That was the one thing where I was like, you know, this, and also I've seen a lot of pictures of the monorail kind of falling apart. You know, there's, it seems to be in disrepair. Something that I think Bob Chapik was responsible for, but I don't think they're fixing it fast enough. Let's see here. John Teal says, how about Josh Brolin being the voice for Wario in the NCU? I don't know. I mean, I think Josh Brolin's very bad past with uh, domestic abuse has been brought up a lot lately. I would be nervous about uh, hiring him. Uh, Keith says, could the writer's strike affect the Rick and Morty writers? The pro oh, no. No, it wouldn't, because they couldn't hire any writers, Keith. They couldn't hire any writers. Let's see here. Andrew says, Grace, what are your thoughts on Netflix's Cleopatra controversy, and will this affect the Gal Gadot Cleopatra adaptation? I think Patty Jenkins lost her entire career. That's how bad Wonder Woman 1984 was. I thought it had its moments, for sure. But, oh, bye, Newswriter22. But it didn't work out. Like, you know, there's no way you can objectively say that movie wasn't a colossal flop. It killed, like, almost everybody's career who was associated with it, except Pedro Pascal. He escaped. Uh, and Chris Pine was, was doing okay. Uh, but, yeah, it's pretty bad. Uh, as for the Netflix controversy, um, I don't know enough about the history of Cleopatra uh, to talk about whether or not what ethnicity she really was of. 
Uh, if you aren't familiar, they did a, a, a Netflix like pseudo documentary. Well, they had like an actress playing her, and they had a, a black actress doing it. But there are a lot of different ethnicities in South, in Africa, and Egypt is in Africa. Uh, I just I think it's good they're no longer whitewashing Cleopatra. I appreciate that, um, but I can't really I, I can't quite comment on. Uh, you know, what ethnicity Cleopatra actually was. I wish somebody would look into it a little bit more definitively so we could settle this. Um, but I know that I know that Egypt was upset about it, but you know, I, I mean, they're all, it's the African continent. I, I don't think it's, you know, again, it's hard, it's hard for me to, I mean, it's a real life person. And I think the only way to settle the argument is what did the real life person look like? But unfortunately we don't know uh, because of course of the time period. Woo! All right, let's see here. Sockley, well, that's interesting to hear your opinion, Sockley. Oh, let's see here. Dream says, Grace, I remember another BTT member inquiring about you watching Banshee. You just wanted to co-sign that. Thank you. Yes, apparently some of my favorite actors were on that show, Tom Pelfrey and Anthony Starr. But I got to watch Rebels. I'm watching stuff that's coming out. It's very hard for me to go back and watch a show, but I do appreciate the recommendation. Frosty Salt, I did see that picture that you sent of Ariel and her sisters. Uh, I'm looking forward to when they have a new trailer soon, hopefully, so we can, we can uh, break that down and I can react to it. Again, though, I thought the VFX on the photo were just awful. Uh, and it was a little frustrating. And we don't know their names. We don't know if they definitely are doing different oceans. So it's a little tough. Thanks, Matthew. Thank you very much. Uh, Andrew said, Sony also showed footage from Jennifer Lawrence's No Hard Feelings at CinemaCon and released new posters. Do you think the movie will do well? I don't know. I got to tell you, I thought the trailer was kind of funny. I thought it was very adult. And I didn't think it was going to have a wide audience. But I thought it was kind of funny. And I, think, I, th I don't know how it'll do in theaters, but I mean, it might have an okay opening weekend, but I think it's going to do really well on digital and streaming. All right, let me try and make sure I get to everybody's question there. Sex says, here's an idea for Magneto in the MCU. Make Eric, uh, 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 Eric uh, an Iranian Jewish person who survived uh, the, the year of cruelty in 1979 and lived. That's a very complex uh, suggestion. Uh, let's see. I'm curious. I'm curious to see what they decide to do. I have heard a way that they might be putting some diversity in uh, the Fantastic Four. Uh, I don't want to comment on it because I don't know for sure if they're doing it. And I think it would be, I'd be curious to see the reaction if they do it. But I think we could have quite the conversation ahead of ourselves. I, they are casting all four roles for Fantastic Four right now. And they do plan to announce it, I think, soonish. I think at the very latest at Comic-Con. So I'm excited. I heard they were doing like, last I heard they were doing chemistry tests between the actors. Uh, Michael says, the last writer's strike ended up creating reality shows. Wouldn't companies just go back to that? To a large degree, yes, they would, Michael. Yes. Present Progressive, sees, uh, pro Present Progressive says, seeing John Wick 4 as someone who has uh, never watched a John Wick movie before. Totally agree that Paris is the best. Arc de Triomphe scene was crazy. Oh, I'm glad you enjoyed it. I thought the second, the, the Paris stuff was incredible. All right, hold on. All right, this is, Brett says, two questions. I heard Aquaman is testing lower than Batgirl. Could they shelve it? And viewer Anon says, The Flash is the best superhero movie in a while. Well, I haven't seen it, so I can't comment on The Flash. Um, but let's see. And again, I told you, is it doesn't really matter if the flash is good. The question is, you know, is it worth seeing in theaters in particular? Um, uh, I don't think they're going to shelve Aquaman and I have a hard time believing that it's that bad considering, uh, James Wan. I have a lot of faith in James Wan as a creative. All right, let's see here. Wan says thoughts on Kieran Culkin being pushed as the lead actor for the Emmys. I like that for him. I'm glad, but I don't. I think he's not going to be a strong candidate. I think it's uh, Jeremy Strong's year, probably. Uh, Jay says, Grace, Dave Filoni said you only need to watch season four of Rebels to catch up. Mm, is that true? That's interesting. Well, maybe I will. Somebody, one of you sent me uh, a list of episodes to watch, and so it didn't look too bad. Uh, Tallinn says, what movie from 2023 thus far would you consider wa warrants a rewatch? Ooh. I don't know. 
I can't think of one off the top of my head, to be honest with you. Let's see here. Jason says it's universally believed by all experts that Cleopatra was Macedonian Greek. Well, yeah, because she came from, yeah, I think that's, well, uh, but, you know, I don't know. It's hard. You know, whoever wins writes the history books, right? And, you know, you just don't know. It's hard to tell. Sean says, Grace, is Finn really coming back to raise Secret War? It's a Star Wars movie? I, I, I have not, if there's some breaking news, great, but I have not heard anything before I pressed stream today. And then Lewis says, have you seen the full leech part of uh, your world from D23? Oh, no, I have not. I don't want to watch a leak. Uh, I have my screening set for, uh, for Little Mermaid. They are screening it quite early. Uh, and so I'm just, at this point, I'll watch another trailer, but I just kind of want to see the movie. Jorge says, if The Flash is a good movie and it makes a lot of money, will Hollywood forget what Ezra has done? Well, here's the thing. If The Flash makes a lot of movie uh, money, wouldn't that mean that the audience has forgotten what Ezra has done? And that's what Hollywood will base it on. That's another wild card factor. How do people feel about Ezra, Ezra Miller? Oh, Max, did I miss your super chat? Let's see here. Dr uh, Dream says, I have to say that after all the bad word of mouth, I really enjoyed Quantum Mania. It was not end game level, but the visuals and costume designs were amazing and Michelle Pfeiffer was everything. Uh, I thought the first time I watched it that started out very strong and then got pretty bad, in my opinion. Uh, um, uh, but I tried to watch it again and it was really hard to watch again. Oh, I, was, I missed some. Here, I'll come back here. Oh, Extina, you're in New York City. How wonderful. Any recommendations? Well, you know, everything that's uh, popular with tourists is popular for a reason. Hit all those popular spots. Statue of Liberty, Rockefeller Center, Times Square. Although, be careful in Times Square. Um, you know, the Village. I think there's a lot of Central Park. There's, you know, just check out all the, the major spots, especially since it's your first time. Lewis is, oh, so that was the part of your world. Let's see here. Dum, dum, dum. Did I miss anything else? Simon says, when can we expect CinemaCon coverage on The Flash? Uh, they're going to do a trailer uh, at 3 o'clock in half an hour. I will react to it, and then I will break it down. And I'm not going to do a thing on the movie because I didn't see the movie. Let's see here. I mean, maybe we'll talk about the reaction on the live stream tomorrow. Let's see. Where is your other comment that I missed? I don't see it. I don't see it, Max. I'm going all the way back here, Max. I don't see it. I'm sorry. Maybe you can ask it again in regular and I'll look for it. Oh, Stu, pew, pew, thanks for asking. Yes, the watch along was moved. It was going to be this past Sunday, but I wasn't feeling well. So the next watch along is this Sunday at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Is that right? Yep, 5 p.m. And we're watching Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. The, in the Indiana Jones I've seen the least. So that's why, we're, that's why, that's why I chose that one. Uh, Rabbi, I haven't certain, heard anything about Warner Brothers presentation yet. I'll go and check out if there was any news, but, uh, I don't think they've released anything to the public. I think the only thing that Warner Brothers is releasing to the public today is the Flash trailer. And then they want everyone to tweet about the Flash who saw it, uh, later. Danny says, Grace, will Avatar 3 make 2 billion? Well, let's see. Let's see, I think there's like a fire tribe, so that could add some different kind of visuals. And maybe it could. I really liked the last one. I was surprised, considering I disliked the other one so much. Ricky says the Flash movie is going to get two billion. I like your enthusiasm. Uh, Jennifer, I hope you heard what I said about the next Movie Club Watch Along. It'll be this coming Sunday. Ah, uh, thanks, Sean. I have, uh, I'm glad you trust me. I appreciate that. That means a lot. I take it very seriously. All right, let me ask. I'll do a poll. Some of you were like, we didn't do a poll today. Let's do a poll. So what are your feelings on the flash? So we'll start with definitely seeing it. Definitely seeing in theaters. If reviews... Waiting on reviews. Waiting on reactions reviews. And I have to tell you, reactions and reviews are very different. And 
and then we'll stream and then not watching. All right, there you go. So you can vote on that while I get to some other questions. And then I got to go. Let's see here. Hold on. Charles says, I just want you to know I'm therapy and doing so. Oh, Charles! Charles. I'm so glad you're doing better. Charles had a very difficult time a couple of months ago, came to the stream and for help, and uh, we really rallied, and I'm glad that Charles reached out, and I I'm just so happy, Charles. Thank you for letting us know. Just waiting on some news about a job I just applied for. Fingers crossed for you, Charles! Fingers crossed. I'm so happy for you. Uh, let's see here. Dream, I haven't heard anything about the Tom Holland movie, but it is, of course, moving forward. Simon says, you're aware of Metal Gear Solid's successful video? I've heard of it, but I don't know very well about it. I haven't heard anything about it recently. Jewel says, can regular members watch along or do you need to upgrade? Uh, yes, you would need to upgrade, Jewel. Uh, you know, that's a, a, a separate level of membership for the watch alongs. Uh, so I hope you'll consider, I hope you'll consider upgrading. Uh, and I'm glad you found your new house, Jewel. I'm so happy for you and, and good luck with the move this weekend. Uh, Mao, I forget off the top of my head what Knights of the Zodiac is. So it's hard for me to say whether or not I'm going to cover it. Uh, Mike Media says, hey, Grace, since June and July are packed, which film has the best shot to make a billion dollars? Well, I, I said Mario was going to make a billion until I saw it, and I didn't realize how nostalgia-driven it was. And then the only other movies I pegged for a billion this year were Fast X, potentially, and The Little Mermaid. I don't see any other movies making a billion dollars. Maybe Mission Impossible, since people still seem pretty high on Tom Cruise after Top Gun Maverick. He might have really grown, blown up his fan base. So I could see that maybe making a billion, but I don't see a lot of other movies. So I guess that comes out over the summer. So yeah, Mission Impossible. Diego says, using my monthly chat to let you know we appreciate you. Ah, thank you for always being a reliable source and speaking your own thoughts. That's such a kind thing to say, Diego. That is such a nice thing for you to say. I really, that means so much. Uh, Talia says, when do you think the Dune trailer will come? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I mean, they're apparently showing some footage today. I think probably a little, maybe with the Flash it'll play. Maybe over the summer. CO Gaming says, hey, Grace, I don't know your thoughts on this yet, but I'm well, how successful do you think Guardians of the Galaxy 3 will be? I have to see it. I have to see it. Once I'll see it, I see it, I'll have a better idea. Big Trouble in Little China. I saw that a long time ago. Let's see here. I think we got everything there. Yeah. Vic, you just got accepted into the Disney College program. That's exciting. That's exciting news. Oh, congratulations. That's just wonderful. I'm so happy for you. I wonder where you'll be working. They'll put you in a number of different places. You're going to have a great time. Danny says, Grace, are you still sugar-free? I mess up sometimes, Danny, but yes, for the most part, I'm doing it. Warlocks, I would have thought Indy 5 could do it as well, but then I was shocked to discover how few people have seen an Indiana Jones movie. Um, hey, Jordan, thanks for joining. All right, I think I got to everything pretty much. I better get going so I can prep a little bit for the Flash trailer. Uh, oh, look at all the well wishes Charles got. Isn't that nice? That's wonderful. That's really great. I'm so happy about that. Thank you, Charles. And I hope that you sometimes will join the conversation to talk about other stuff, too. You know, you're a part of the group here. We love hearing from you, Charles. Uh, all right, everybody. Oh, yeah, the poll. Thanks. Thanks, Deborah. Okay, let me end the poll. April says, I wish Charlie Hunnam would make better career choices. I don't know. I'm not a big fan of Charlie Hunnam. Game of Thrones, actually, would maybe be a good spot for him, though, April. If only you were his agent or manager. That's a good idea for him. You should, you should tweet him. Uh, let's see here. What are your thoughts on The Flash? 39% definitely seeing it in theaters. 23% waiting on reactions and reviews. That's pretty good. That's over 50%. That's not bad. Two, two months out? I think, there's, I think Warner Brothers has some room to cook there with their press campaign. Let's see if the reactions, the social media reactions, change your mind. Uh, and then not watching, 19% and 17% will wait to stream. That's not small either, though. 
That's a little under 40%. That's not small either. It's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting. Uh, I mean, I think, you know, and there, Michael Keaton could be a big nostalgia play, you know? Like, my parents, they went to see Quantumania, and they were like, we shouldn't have seen it. <laughs> I felt so bad. They were like, we shouldn't have done it. Although they are going to see Guardians. They were, we're doing Guardians. Um, so that's funny. Uh, so they're like, well, here we go again. And I was like, are you going to watch The Flash? And they were like, we don't know. We don't know. Uh, but they like Michael Keaton. So they're like, I think when the time comes, they, they might go see Michael Keaton. So that could be true. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. Uh, all right, everybody. I had a wonderful, wonderful time talking to you, as always. Uh, and I will be live streaming. The plan is to live stream tomorrow and Thursday. So uh, let's, let's see. Let's see. But that's the goal. That's what I'm trying to do. Danny, well, here's your super chat. Where to go, Danny? I'm going to look for it. Here I go, Danny. Danny says, Grace, I remember back in the day you dedicated an X-Men vid to a fan. Oh, yes, I did. That was very sad. Ah, oh, very sad. The BTT community is really wonderful, though. You guys are great. You guys are great. I still hear from that, uh, that gentleman's brother. He's very nice. All right, everybody who, who, who had told me about his brother passing. Okay, everybody. And Charles, I'm so glad you've turned things around. Keep it up. Keep it up. Be the power of positivity. All right, everybody, have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you in about 20 minutes for The Flash. See you in about 20 minutes for The Flash. Bye. Bye-bye.